Victor Little Vic Amuso's leadership of the Lucchese crime family was characterized by violence, power struggles, and a confrontational... Who was Victor Amuso, the deadly dawn? Victoria Vic Amuso, reign of the Lucchese mob family, is one of the pure terror mostly for members of his own Borgata. As he ordered scores of his soldiers and captains, whacked. His murderous rule has ensured his place at the head of the table, tough as he remained at the official boss despite serving a life sentence. Born in Carnese, Brooklyn, a few years after the end of the infamous Castamorese War, which led the foundation for New York five families. Vittorio Musa found himself growing up surrounded by tough Italian mobsters. At the peak of the powers, he effectively was impressed what he saw and began doing the things a teenager does when he wanted to impress a certain group. In his case, Musa got involved in crime. The Mafia noticed the young wannabe gangster and nurtured his talents. He eventually joined what was known as the 19 Hole Crew, which was run by Christopher Christie Tech Foneri a couple in the Lucchese crime family. An associate of his crew and he met and became very close to Anthony Gaspar Casso. Amuso and Casso formed a natural partnership and there were two or many crimes during the 1970s and the 1980s. Involved in anything from fraud and extortion to gambling and drug trafficking. In 1977 both men were caught up in heroin bust involving the Sicilian Mafia and a pipeline from Thailand to the United States. They were also part of a highly professional burglary crew, known as the Bypass Gang, which broke into banks and jewelry stores in Manhattan and Long Island. According to it estimates, the gang made off with over $100 million in stolen merchandise. The mob loves good earners, and amuser was definitely dead, but in order to become a true force in the Mafia, one has to make his bones. As they say, he had to commit murder on the behalf of the organization. At this, too, Amuso excelled. Whenever Fornari needed someone dead, he sent out Amuso, or Caso, or both, and that person would not be briefing the next day. With a fierce reputation for violence and ability to make millions of dollars for the mob, the pair rose up the ranks. Gasso became the right hand man of Farnari and he's become the family consigliere, while Amuso was promoted to capo of Farnari's old crew. A nice bump, but within a few years they would rise even higher. In 1986, Louis Casey crime family boss Anthony Do Tony Dogs Corallo summoned Amuso and Gasso to meet up with him to discuss the future of the family. Corallo Along with the underboss, Tom Mix Santoro and Consigliere Fonari would soon be spending the rest of his life in prison after being found guilty in the commission case and he was seeking the right person to replace him as head of the family. His eyes had fallen on Amuso and Casso. Vic Amuso was the new leader of the Lucchese crime family with Casso functioning as his underboss and Consigliere at the varying times during the following years. Anyone they deemed a threat was killed. Anyone who was rumored to steal money from them was killed. Anyone rumored to might possibly become a rat was killed. Anyone who looked at them funny was killed. Amusa's reign was pure terror. His action caused many soldiers and captains to defect and become a covenant witness. Tough, some will say it, was Gaspar Gasso who was behind the murderous decisions. Amusa still had to sign off on them and there is a clear evidence he was much part of the slaughtering as Gasso. But all those bodies started to attract the attention of law enforcement as he did. All the Lucchese turncoats who came telling authorities everything they knew about the group. Easily business dealings, one by one. In 1991, prosecutors finally hit Amuso and Gasso with racketeering charges. By then, both men had already gone on the lam, hiding out out somewhere to wait out the storm. They had been tipped off about the coming indictments by corrupt law enforcement sources. Despite the fact that they were on the run, Amuso and Casso maintained film control of their family and frequently visit associates in New York. They also set up a pre-arranged telephone system to communicate with other links using anonymous payphones. One day in the summer of 1991, Amuso was on his way to such public payphone to call home and see what's what. 
As he arrived at the Sprinter shopping mall, he was closely watched by the FBI's agents. Once he picked up the phone and the dialed the number, they swarmed on him and placed him in handcuffs. By January 1993, Amusa was looking at the life prison after being found guilty of racketeering charges. He fled from. At the age of 81, he's still serving his time, despite his time locked up and away from the streets. He remains the Lucchese official boss with all the respect and reverence that come with it.